Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joint Fairfield County Scores and Westport Libraries live webinar on social commerce in 2021. I'm Tim Ryan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County, and I'll be your host. First, some brief information on SCORE. There's over 320 offices and 11,000 volunteers nationwide. We're part of the Small Business Administration. SCORE Fairfield County has over 130 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. We offer three primary value-added services to small business owners, free one-on-one -on -one counseling, two educational workshops and webinars like this one, and extensive resources on our website, including tools to help you build your business plan. SCORE puts on many webinars each month. Look for future events on our webinar calendar at fairfieldcounty.score.org. Some useful information about today's event. If you have any questions, please use the chat window at any time during the presentation. It is located in the lower part of your screen usually. Our webinar will end at 1 p.m. to respect your time. The session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next couple of days. Also with me today is Ellen Janpole, business librarian at the Westport Library, and that's today's partner. Welcome, Ellen. Could you say a few words and introduce your speakers, please? Thanks, Jim. I'm Ellen Janpole, business librarian at the Westport Library and co-sponsor of today's event. Our upcoming business webinars include selling on eBay, Wednesday, April 7th from noon to 2 p.m. presented by Russell Wayne and how lockdown has changed TV viewing and how to make the most of it on Wednesday, April 28th from noon to 1 p.m. with Virginia Giuliano. Please check our website, westportlibrary.org for more information and to register. Our presenters today are Jeff Seaver and John Dupree. Jeff Seaver runs Seaver Interactive, a digital marketing and website design firm in Westport, Connecticut. He has been building websites and creating online content for over 25 years and is an accomplished designer, artist, and computer expert. John Dupree runs Calibrate Marketing in Danbury, Connecticut. John's experience combines over 20 years in sales and marketing in the B2B world with extensive technological knowledge. He develops marketing strategies for startups and small businesses that improve results and ROI in email, SEO, and search and social media including in-house mentoring and training. It's all yours, Jeff. Thanks very much, Ellen. Um, welcome everybody, glad you're able to join us today. I was uh, neglectful in not flipping through our opening slides about the Fairfield County score and the Westport Library. Um, but I just wanted to mention those of you that haven't taken advantage of uh, getting yourselves a, a business mentor and score, they're absolutely terrific. Um, I've used one for years, I've been one and learned uh, so much uh, from participating in that. If any of you uh, are uh, swept up a little bit today with the speed of the presentation, there's a lot of material to cover. It's essentially impossible in one um, hour session, but um, please feel free to send me an email at the end. Um, send it to jeff at siever.com and I'll send you back a PDF of the uh, deck for today. And of course, with me is my partner, John Dupree, and I'm Jeff Seaver at Seaver Interactive here in the Westport. Um, we always sort of like to start off with a little bit about our philosophy underneath all of this. The change in the atmosphere of the act of marketing has really changed so much since the time that uh, I was a kid when I was being completely bombarded with ads for Wonder Bread, Hertz rent a car, and driving a Chevy um, to an attitude these days where you just kind of can't get away with 
simply hawking your, your merchandise. You've really got to find a way to make a personal connection and allow for a sense of dialogue. But underneath all of that, we really adhere to the notion that trust is really key. For those of, of you who have attended a bunch of our workshops, you probably have heard us kind of beating you over the head about this. But the sense of it is you really want to come at this from a point of view of authenticity. It's detectable, it's discernible. Um, there's kind of no faking it. Um, well, you can fake it, but you gotta be very, very good to fake it. It's a lot easier to just come at it honestly and genuinely. Um, our, another word for the authenticity really is, to, is passion. People love to uh, work with and buy from people that they know are passionate about. Jeff, could you speak up a little bit louder? Are people have saying it's a little bit low. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Let me turn this up. Hold on. Input volume. Same old system. Built-in microphone. Does that help at all? That's better. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and then the other uh, key part of this uh, is really... <laughs> finding some way to be of service. How's that audio now? Okay. Okay. Um, and that is really uh, finding some way to be, to satisfy some sort of a, a need. It's not just a matter of, you know, I need a widget. Do you happen to have one? I'll buy one from you. But more importantly, um, I need to feel secure. I need to feel safe. I need to feel, um, I need to uh, have a roof over my head. I need food. I need really basic underlying needs. And if you're able to look at your product from that point of view, um, it really changes the way you go about marketing yourself. You'll notice we're not really talking too much about service today. This is a, a webinar on social commerce, um, which is essentially just an evolution from e-commerce. And it really does pertain very much to selling a service, although I think that will change over time, but right now, this particular platform is really focused on selling a product online. John, would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely, yes. We're seeing we're seeing some uh, additional services being offered um, through e-commerce, but for the majority, it's um, it's going to be a, a physical product you can buy. So basically, um, everybody knows what e-commerce is already. The definition of it is simply selling goods or services on the internet. Um, and it's a, just a huge revolution in the way that things are sold. Um, everybody remembers, uh, at least remembers historically, the Sears catalog, which used to be mailed out, a very, very thick catalog. The joke, of course, was that it was the substitute for toilet paper in people's outhouses. And I can tell you, being a professional marketer, we believe that a lot of the destinations for much of our marketing materials hasn't changed too much over the years. So, um, but what I think is so much fun and interesting about what we're talking about today is the evolution from e-commerce to social commerce. I don't think it's as big as the shift from the Sears catalog to online shopping, but it is a really, really big deal, essentially making the line between social media platforms and e-commerce blurry uh, to the point where it's become non-existent, uh, the, the division between the two, as you'll see shortly. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, just how this thing all got started. You guys don't need to take these notes. As I say, you can just ask for a copy of this deck. But it's been building slowly for a really long time. I came on board this whole game in, I was programming in 67, but Around 82, I got my very first um, desktop computer and started joining bulletin boards. Um, some of you may remember CompuServe. Um, browsers really weren't happening that much until Mosaic evolved into Firefox. And then the whole thing just exploded and took off. eBay really changed the, the landscape. So did Amazon. And then a little while later, some of you may have been subscribing to DVDs and then watch, watch Netflix evolve to online only. Much of this evolution has a direct connection to the speed of and bandwidth of, um, of online services. Uh, you just simply could not have pulled off streaming video um, in the early 90s. There just wasn't the bandwidth to support it. 
these days with the advent of high-speed internet in homes, 300, 500 um, megabytes per second, and the advent, of course, of 5G, much touted and nowhere near implemented yet, um, we're going to see some more changes still. Um, and then the whole thing has just grown remarkably in the last couple of years, and people are forecasting uh, the growth still. I think what the, the big game changer, at least in my sense of things, has been the explosions uh, in e-commerce caused by the pandemic. Uh, as any of you joined us last week, you heard us say that we really believe that about 10 years' worth of technology got compressed down into essentially one year. Um, when all of a sudden everybody's meeting on Zoom, there. I mean, I, the other day I needed some piece of um, what did I need? Some minor grocery item. I forgot what it was, and I started thinking about what it was going to take for me to. It wasn't a grocery item. It was something you could get from a like a Target type store, and I thought about what it was going to take for me to go and do that, and I went on Amazon and ordered. I think it was an eight dollar product. And the next morning, it was sitting in front of my front door. That's a major, major um, change, not just in the marketplace, but in the way that I think. And that's what um, we're going to talk about today. Uh, the big pioneers of this thing, of course, were Amazon and eBay, CompuServe. I don't know if any of you ever were around to set up a Yahoo storefront. But they offered some amazing, amazing advantages, the chance to really um, you know, set up your own branded online um, store and they would walk you through it but of course you really had to pay through the nose back then for the privilege and um, there was there really weren't that many variables and then all of a sudden um, big stores began to become involved in the, um, in the e-commerce business John, do you want to take it from here? Yeah, I, well, why uh, take it, Jeff? Why don't you work with Zoom uh, audio because we're still getting a lot of comments that people can't hear you. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, take it to the next slide. Okay. So instead of having a, a dedicated uh, site set up uh, like the the Yahoo and the eBay sites, uh, big e-commerce allowed you to create your own custom website, and then. Um, it, it was similar to having your own store um, where you could have uh, the control over the branding. It was much more secure. There was a lot of high startup costs. Um, you had to have a dedicated programmer to run it and they usually had to manage it on a, a daily basis. What's uh, what happened with uh, the big e-commerce was that um, as programmers moved around or changed, um, <clears throat> the whole store had to get rebuilt uh, every time a, <clears throat> a new programmer came in. <clears throat> okay. Next slide. So then we got into what's called self-hosting a store. Uh, so the self-hosting was where instead of having a dedicated uh, place, we used a content management system, which um, similar to Word, you know, or like WordPress and uh, Zencard, Magento. And those were uh, like condo units where the outsides were all set, but the insides you could customize however you wanted to. So this would be a typical example of a, a standard WooCommerce. And one of the things we found with uh, e-commerce is because uh, it, each one um, had the same framework, they really started to look alike. Um, you know, two or three products, grids across, uh, product categories, search lookups. And from one storefront to the next store, they, they were really um, mostly identical. And from a design standpoint, they were just the most horrendous designs um, when we were looking at them. But what it allowed was it was very easy to install, very easy to set up, very easy to manage. Um, so you, you, know, you could uh, have a, a sole proprietor suddenly go online and be able to offer e-commerce stores. Um, if they wanted to grow larger or if they had uh, to do any kind of drop shipping, there's a lot of choices that had to happen there. And that's when some of the technical skills would, would be needed. So these third party stores, there's a bunch of them out there. Shopify right, right now seems to be uh, the leader. Uh, Wix and Squarespace started off as just websites that have gotten into the e-commerce side of it. Um, but then you got big commerce 3D card Vulsion. So there's a, there's a bunch of them that are out there. And the, the biggest choice with it seems to be how easy are they to set up for yourself, uh, how, you know, how uh, secure. But in terms of what they deliver, they really deliver very same things. 
Where'd you go? Okay. Where did I go? Yep. Sorry. So, so, um, so what, and what's happened with these third party stores is that um, we're now able to have uh, more and more people going online. There's literally thousands of stores a day that are being added to the, to the internet. And um, with them, you know, you, you can have anybody really starting it up um, over a weekend. The big problem is that just like the concept of if I build it, they will come, you can create a store real fast. Getting traffic to it and allowing people to see it, that becomes the trouble. Um, so the marketing and the SEO, search engine optimization, that is your new job. Um, how to get people to walk in the door. Yeah. So again, it's very highly competitive. Thousands of stores a day are being added to the internet. Um, our, our behavior online is constantly changing, meaning that what we expect, um, we, see, we when we do shopping on Amazon, we see how that interaction happens, that there's reviews, that there's testimonials, that there's ratings, that there's comparisons. And we expect that when we go to the neighborhood store. Um, also, we wanna be able to do it on our tablets, on our phones, on our smart TVs now. Um, so whatever type of device we have, we wanna be able to see it. and. If you talk about how the e-commerce stores were originally set up with you know, a three product grid across, when you put that onto a phone, it totally has to change the layout and the look of it. One of the other big problems we run into is that because it's e-commerce and you can have same day or next day shipping, your competitors are across the, the nation where in the past they may have just been local competitors. So it's a very competitive environment and there's different uh, cost bases that people will have. So it becomes, um, in many ways, you can't just be the, uh, the lowest price competitor. Uh, so when we're marketing a store, we'll do the traditional marketing, um, the gift cards, the discounts, the you know, newsletter, uh, the uh, newspapers. Email marketing is, is more becoming the standard. Search is very, very important. Um, and then the search advertising and, and such. So. The big, um, we find that a lot of people who are doing the e-commerce got into it thinking, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to be able to replace the, uh, the store cost, the brick and mortar store cost. And instead, all that money that was spent on inventory and stocking product and so forth is going into the marketing side of it. So basically we've been uh, reviewing up to now what's been going on, which is the, the advent of, of e-commerce evolving into very, very large e-commerce platforms like eBay and Yahoo, then evolving into the opportunity for us each to set up our own stores um, and then also to rent third party store space from places like Shopify and big commerce. And then what it takes to build those, what it takes to market those. So the next step, I would say a logical step, except I wouldn't have thought of it, was to actually begin to integrate social media platforms, host, um, you know, uh, influencer platforms and social media pages, personal pages and business pages, and begin to market directly off of them. And that's what's so revolutionary about what's going on now. Okay. So you're basically able to purchase directly off of people's feeds I think the first one I knew about was Instagram. Is that, I don't know if that's the right order, but I thought it was Instagram and then Facebook and Pinterest. And now of course we're seeing Snapchat and TikTok and a bunch of others uh, that are coming. And we actually think that at some point very soon, the lines are gonna be so blurred that you, you won't be able to tell whether you're looking at a, at a, a social media post or, or a, I mean, not a, a social media page or a, an ad page. Um, you can see here a remarkable changes in um, people's um, comfort level and volume level with shopping on social media. And here's some interesting stats. We don't have to go through them all here today, but when you guys download the, um, the PDF, you might find this to be interesting. But basically what we're seeing is that the numbers are really exploding. Yeah, one of the things to take away from this chart is that um, you know, we like to buy from people that we like. And when uh, we're dealing with the storefront and a brand, it's, it's who that brand is and um, that we end up purchasing from. The brand has a personality for us. 
when you start going into social commerce and social e-commerce, um, that social media profile becomes your brand. So especially in this last year where people were really picking sides and, and uh, had positions, um, it can affect how people end up doing business with you. And uh, we're seeing that with social where people will walk away because they saw that um, the person representing the brand had had some uh, negative experiences or negative thoughts on social. Right. Hey, I meant to ask, is my audio okay now? Can Much better. Yep. Good. Um, I don't know why it was working perfectly last week. Now all of a sudden there's problems, but <laughs> that's why they call it technology. John, can you talk a little bit, I think along with the, the store changes, there's been a remarkable change in the use of the search function um, within the context of social media platforms. Can you talk a little bit about those? Sure. So most of us are familiar where we're looking for something, we'll go onto Google and we'll type in the product or, you know, find me a, a restaurant near me, that kind of thing. Um, what we're seeing more and more of is that people, they still want to have that social proof that uh, the question where you ask someone, hey, do you, do you have a good recommendation for me? And instead of doing that face to face uh, or picking up the phone and calling a friend, they'll end up uh, on social media asking for a recommendation. So we're getting... Uh, it's more common now for people to do the searching while they're on Facebook um, to find out more information about a product, to ask if anybody knows of a good uh, piece, um, a good service, or if they have had an experience with a certain product or not. Um, so these products are now becoming, uh, the, the products that are listed on social media are becoming uh, searchable and found by the social media search aspects. Now, Facebook and Instagram, they're they are closed environments, uh, which means that uh, Google does not have free reach in there. So there's many times when there are things in social media that you will not find by doing a Google search. The only way you'll see it is by going into uh, into the so social media account and doing a search for it. So in a marketing world, we often say that we want to market to where the people are. Um, you don't put a billboard up in the center of Kansas if you're uh, talking about coming to a Broadway show. You want to put that, bro that Broadway show billboard you know, on I-95 coming into New York City. With social media, it's that we want to sell where the people are. And we want to be able to have instant re uh, interactions as if somebody walked into our store. So. Uh, Facebook Messenger uh, being one of the new customer service ways people will do a message to a business to ask them a question or try to get interaction rather than calling or sending an email. Um, for small businesses, it's very, very easy, uh, quick to set up and relatively low cost uh, to do it. Um, one of the other big areas is that um, I don't know if people are familiar with the concept of being an influencer, but it's um, so it's like the old days, the product spokesperson, but on social media, it's somebody who is wearing or talking about a certain thing and all their fans and followers start to, you know, think that that, that would be an interesting place to go or um, they want to get more information. Well, now they're able to actually sell directly uh, on their profile. So a influencer could be wearing a, a pair of sunglasses and they could tag them and people could see those sunglasses and buy directly from it. And that influencer would get a commission so we say, directly off of that. Um, so one of the easiest ways uh, is with Instagram shops, you create shops and on your picture, you just tag the different items on the picture. And then that would allow you to connect it to the products that you have listed um, on your Instagram. So that uh, when someone sees it, they can just hover over the product and a little tab pops up that tells what it is and the price, they click it and they'd be able to go right to uh, where they could buy it. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Okay. So, um, in this case, it's someone's wearing this really nice, cool white jacket. You hover over it, it says Tweed Jacket 129. When they click it, it brings them over to the storefront, gives them a checkout on Instagram. They click on it and um, they're able to place the order. Why? So, one of the things that's also happening is that once you do this once on Instagram, all of your purchase details are stored so that it becomes a one click purchase um, very, very easy. That was something that Amazon did a, a while ago and they found that, you know, they had a much higher uh, increase in sales that happened and lower uh, abandoned carts. Instagram was very quick to pick that up. You know, um, creatively, the potential here of where this thing could go is kind of remarkable. I'd encourage everybody that's um, attending today to try to use their most creative instinct to, to explore what their business offers. 
and ways in which this could potentially work for them. But I don't think we're that far away, John, from you, you know, everybody's familiar with product placement. You're watching, you know, an episode on TV and the people open up a, um, a laptop on the thing and there's the Apple logo right there. Apple has obviously paid a ton of money for that particular uh, feature film to show their products only. Uh, same thing with the cars that you see and the fashions that you see. Those are all, they're not there by accident. They're, they're um, it's paid product placement. But I don't think we're that far away from um, paid product placement within still pictures, videos and movies where you can select, choose, wave over, and buy directly from that context. I think that's the possibilities here are kind of remarkable. It's one of the things that's so exciting and a little bit uh, kind of scary <laughs> about when you, commerce. When you when you see the trends for cutting the cable um, and Apple TV and YouTube TV coming out and such, one of the reasons why is that they see this ability to be able to shop directly in a program or in a piece of content uh, coming down the channel. And I'm sure there'll be resistance and then eventually they'll just swamp us all. <laughs> so uh, the concept is to make it as simple as possible. You tag a product in, in your in your posts or your video or so when before you uh, before you post it live. Visitors then can zoom in, they see the image, they click on it, goes into basically a, a storefront area. Um, and whether that store was created by you uploading products or in some cases you can link your store your actual e-commerce store to your social media and it will directly feed it in. Okay. So some other things that you can do is um, on your, uh, when someone is on Explore, uh, so this is not their Instagram feed, but they're on Explore and things come up, then they, uh, you can have your shopping post show up in the Explore area. Um, you can also um, that make sure that, that anybody with a uh, Instagram account would be able to discover you and found you, find you. It's not going out to just your current followers. And of course you can uh, really push it by using the Instagram ads to, uh, to, uh, to push that product um, or that post into the explore category. Now you mentioned any uh, Instagram account, but doesn't it, doesn't it have to be an Instagram business account? When I said any Instagram account, I was referring to any Instagram account will see your product. So yeah. normally if you do a post, as a business account, only people who are following you would be able to see it. Um, but if you are pushing the advertising and, or, or your post goes into the explore category, then anybody on Instagram who who is looking at explore uh, is able to see the, the post. Right. But still, all of this requires uh, being classified as, a, as an Instagram business, doesn't it? Yes. And that is that still a, a process of applying for and being sort of judged worthy by the Instagram uh, panelist or whatever yes and i believe we talked a little bit about that um what it takes to be able to add products to your instagram account yep. this is one yep. of the coolest parts i just loved uh, yep. the idea that this could be uh, saved for later just blew my mind um, so we have a quick question. Uh, someone asking, where, where is Explore? I don't see it. The most popular way that Explore happens is when somebody has caught up with their feed uh, in Instagram. So if you have gone back to where your last were and then you continue going, now you're in the Explore section. Um, so that's the most, most common way that people get to it. Um, I think it's accessible through the menu system also. It is through the menu as well, yeah. Okay. Uh, so save for later means that I, I came across a post. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, I don't want to lose that post for when I show it to my spouse or to my friends or look at it later on when I have more time. So I can just do a click and save. And uh, then I can go back and look at all my saved posts later on. Um, and this way I can create a personal collection similar to Pinterest. And I can uh, store a whole bunch of these posts that are all focused on when I'm looking to get married or I'm re, uh, redoing my living room and I'm saving different things that I'm seeing online as uh, ideas and, and inspiration. Okay. So um, shortly, and I think actually in process right now is the in-app checkout, which means that somebody can purchase directly in Instagram. They don't have to have to go to the third party store. Um, you all, we also have it where creators are able to uh, 
to create their own products and they can link to other stores and other places that have allowed a relationship to happen with them. Uh, so it's not just their products, but others products that they're able to do. Um, can go back into posts and uh, be able to tag what the different products are. So you can uh, go back in time. And then the Instagram catalog, um, what that allows it to do is that um, if I go to my, my main page, I can see catalog, and then that will show all the products I have available. Okay. So this is showing a quick example how the in-app chat checkout happens. You'll see it says check out on Instagram. And the big thing here is that it memorizes all of your information um, so that when you're buying, it makes it very quick and easy to purchase and not have to put in a credit card each time. And it's actually supposedly safer than having to put a purchase uh, credit card in when you're doing a purchase. So for the creators, they'll take a they'll they'll take a picture of themselves wearing a product. They'll tag it. It will then go over to whatever the storefront is that uh, offers that product for sale. And um, through the Instagram tracking, they're able to get credit for the fact that that sale was generated by what they did. Okay. Um, and this is an example of being able to go back in time to a post, tag a bunch of things that you're wearing and hook them into uh, where the shopping is happening. So, right, so if you're a brand, you can tag up to five products in one post. Um, you give a direct link to the website for purchasing. They're beginning to loosen up uh, some of the restrictions. Um, it used to be that you could only connect to um, products that you had uploaded or that you were c connected with on Facebook. Now it's, uh, it's opening up a little bit more. Also in terms of what exactly a brand is, is opening up. Yeah. So prior to Instagram, there was Facebook shops. Um, Facebook actually came up before Instagram did and um, they're owned by the same, same group. So um, you're, it's in Facebook that you would actually load up your products and Instagram would then pull from your Facebook uh, products uh, from or pull your products from Facebook. So Facebook shops, it's a virtual storefront uh, built right into it. It's part of one of the tabs you click on uh, when you're visiting uh, Facebook and visiting a page, you click on shops and you'll see all the products that they have to offer. And then you can um, do a post directly put those tags, those products right into the post uh, so that when somebody is looking at the post, they see the tag, they click on it and it takes them directly over to the Facebook product page. Um, you can also do this when you're doing Facebook Live. So you can uh, have a link in your Facebook Live. So as you're showing how that product gets used or the, uh, the results of the product, really big in the cosmetic world, obviously, they can link directly to the product so that people are able to buy it. Yeah. And this is a uh, just a <clears throat> little bit more information about how social search is becoming the new search. When I'm in shop, uh, I can do a search and then any products that have been put in the shop, regardless of whether I'm a fan of that company or not, will start showing up in my search results. Yeah, Facebook shops are amazing. And one of the most amazing things about it is you really can start from scratch right here. You don't have to have a pre-existing um, shopping platform or a space online. Okay. You can just go in, get it started, get it set up and start uh, advertising or promoting or, or redirecting yeah. to it, uh, pretty much within an hour or so. It's a, it's a remarkable tool. And one, one of the things that, that was unique with Facebook when they first came out with this is that they weren't connecting to a, another e-commerce platform. Other social media platforms were, you know, they were working with Shopify or working with big commerce. Um, Facebook said, no, you can create your own e-commerce platform right on Facebook. Um, you don't have to have a storefront somewhere else. Um, they, they incorporated the shop tab, so it became more like a catalog. Um, because of Messenger, you can answer customer questions. You know, you have businesses that they do all their business now on Facebook shops. Um, they're, they're not doing any in-person, they're not doing any catalog mailings, they're not doing uh, even uh, standard e-commerce Shopify. 
And of course, if you do have a Shopify, you can link to it and it will automatically update the inventory and pricing and things along those lines. Right. I think if Facebook ruled the world, what Mark Zuckerberg would like more than anything else is for you to never ever leave his platform for any reason. I think he'd like you to be able to order lunch, learn a new language, um, get a good night's sleep, uh, and do your job all right from within Facebook as long as he was able to bombard you with them. Um, Adver uh, directed and targeted advertising all day. If you've ever used their VR tool, you may never want to leave. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have not tried of you. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's very, very, very immersive. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to have a video of you trying it out <laughs> and, and make that my virtual reality. But so here's a cute little quote from Zuckerberg that kind of backs up what I'm saying. Um, it is a remarkable opportunity. I mean, we, you know, people who own a small business have the same basic uh, abilities now as somebody that is running a giant, uh, you know, goop level um, e-commerce platform. So the main reason why Facebook is doing this, it's to make money. Um, now they're not charging you for your shop the way that uh, Shopify does and so forth. They really want you to have to be using ads to get people to your shop. Um, they will do a uh, fee when someone uh, purchases through Facebook. Uh, so when someone does a payment through Facebook or uh, the Instagram checkout, uh, the fee, it's a little high right now. Um, it's 5% um, plus a 40 cents on top of that. Um, but I think actually they may be, they either may have changed it or may be in the process of changing that. We need to update that uh, slide. Yep. We gave this a uh, presentation back in what was it December? Yep. Okay. Uh, so again, some of the reasons for the social shop advantages, um, why people are doing it. Um, it's very easy to use. If I'm on Facebook and I want to purchase, or if I'm on Instagram and I'm looking to make a purchase, I don't have to pull out my credit card. I don't have to go through some complicated, um, you know, shopping cart process. You know, one of the problems that you run into with big commerce is that every single checkout process is different um, with Shopify or some of the third party hosted uh, places becomes a more um, clean checkout per process. And then with now Facebook and Instagram, it's the exact same process and they've, they've made it as frictionless as possible. Um, okay. I can't believe you're using the word frictionless now. <laughs> I warned you about that. Don't start saying methodology and frictionless in the same sentence, please. Yeah. Um, no, it is absolutely amazing. The idea that, because I, we used to use fulfillment houses. Um, there, we'd set up a whole marketing campaign, direct traffic towards it, direct mail, even online. And then somebody would place an order. And the next thing you said was, oh my God, what do we do now? These guys are actually they want it to be soup to nuts, completely controlled by them. And they'll actually fulfill and ship, which is an astonishing, if, if you've ever tried fulfillment and shipping, you'll know what a nightmare that is to, especially as a solopreneur, it's, it's brutal. You'll be up all night. Mm -hmm. So right after Facebook and Instagram, there's Pinterest shops. Um, Pinterest is doing something very similar. Uh, where they will um, basically have a uh, you know, have the, uh, the products being uh, identified on their posts. You click on them and you'll start to see the posts. They've taken to a, another level where they are integrating in scans to the shop. So if if you have a product that Pinterest is familiar with and somebody sees it some uh, somewhere else, they can scan it and it will go right over to Pinterest and find that product. Uh, I think the next page talks about that too far yeah yeah so so i can do a, a what they call a lens uh search and it will when i scan a product they will uh, the lens will go all through pinterest to see if they can find that pinterest product and then will pop it up and show me exactly how much it is and so forth to be able to purchase it directly through pinterest or the, the purchase link directly through pinterest that's astonishing i think And TikTok's jumped on the bandwagon very much. Yeah. And 
And uh, we're seeing more and more TikTok taking off even faster than Instagram shops have. Um, and a lot of the influencers on TikTok are um, representing products and um, pushing through the product sales through TikTok. So what we'll see, see is that um, brands are looking at creating basically mini series, um, like TV series, so forth, that they will uh, talk about their products or uh, that they'll show a lifestyle that includes their products on there. And then at any time on any one of these, you know, mini, mini TV programs, you'll be able to click on the product and find out where to buy them or just buy them directly through. Um, through Snapchat or through TikTok. We decided we wanted to walk everybody through a, a sample setup. Um, we chose Facebook because out, out of the various platforms, which are not all of them um, that we've mentioned here today, uh, Facebook is probably the fastest and easiest one, the one with the least amount of um, roadblocks, hurdles and qualifications in order to get going. So we chose it as, a, as an easy little walkthrough. So. Um, if you could just go to the uh, commerce manager in Facebook and hit start selling, they'll walk you through the entire process. It's, it's fairly intuitive. I would say it's, it's as well designed as any, I don't consider Facebook to be the best UX UI user experience designed um, platform in the world, but they did a really good job on this one. A really good job. John, you want to walk through this a little bit? Yeah. Um, so one of the things with Facebook is that um, any of these cloud platforms, they, they change on the fly. So they have to have some kind of good wizard because they're not going to send an instruction book to you. Uh, Facebook has one of the best wizards out there for this. Once you go to the commerce manager and say, start selling, it will take you step by step through what you need to do in order to um, connect your page and uh, figure out how you're going to uh, do the checkout, where money is going to go to, uh, and what type of channels you want to have for selling, adding your products and all that. So it's, it's a very quick, you know, go to each page, just fill in the two or three things they're asking for, click the next button. And then that will, um, after five or six steps, you'll have a shop set up. Because it's fairly intuitive, we decided just to skip ahead a little bit uh, through the, we don't need to walk you through every single step of setting up your shop. But then the next stage you'll want to do is to create an actual catalog of your product. All right. Yeah, so um, so if one of the things Facebook will ask is where is the product going to come from or is it going to come from some other store? If so, then they, they need the store link that you're going to give to it or is it going to be products that you upload? So if you've started to add products, um, this is where they create a catalog. So you can say, this is going to be my menswear, my ladies wear, my activewear, create your different catalogs and then drop your products into each of the catalogs. And to create a catalog, again, it's very simple. You're just putting a name, a basic description, and then some image, because um, obviously this is so much of a visual experience. They want to have an image for each of the catalogs as well as the products. Um, one of our um, attendee, attendees posted a question about um, how often will a consumer abandon a purchase due to having to pay a shipping fee? Um, your instinct is right. I don't think it's specific to this webinar, but I do think it's um, an important thing to mention that one of the things we're really finding with social commerce is that cart it's called cart abandonment and it's the bane of all uh, online e-commerce um, purveyors. But uh, we're finding the cart abandonment numbers to be much more manageable on social commerce than they are on standard e-commerce. I think one of the reasons why is it's, it's more personal, it's very immersive um, and a lot of times folks will just sort of see the, the shipping fee as um, another roadblock to getting the thing that they want as opposed to, oh my God, look at that. Um, but the answer is, you know, Amazon came up with a brilliant idea, which is uh, paying a hundred and what is it now? $135 a year or something for Amazon Prime and uh, free shipping has generated a gigantic um, change in their business model, um, which is a loss leader, by the way. I'm positive there's, there's no way in the world they can ship an $8 product. 
uh, and make a profit on it. It's not, I don't see how it's even possible. No matter how underpaid your staff is. Mm -hmm. um, John, you want to talk about catalogs? Yeah, yeah we, we covered creating a catalog name and description. Yeah. So then when it comes to doing a product, uh, it's basically the same thing. You're going to add a product. You definitely want to have some kind of good product image to put on there. Um, you can have multiple images uh, for when it comes to a, a product. Or on a catalog, you're only really going to have one image. Um, you have the ability to put in different uh, options, the size, the colors, and so such for it. And um, it becomes very easy to just say, okay, so that's one product, save and next, save and new, um, and be able to add multiple products very quickly, very easy to it. So the most complicated part is the checkout process. Um, <clears throat> You know, for whatever reason, uh, e-commerce has to make sure that they are not doing any kind of money laundering um, cap uh, system setup and such. So they will want them uh, to verify uh, that the checkout process, that you're a legitimate company. Um, that <clears throat> So you have a U.S. bank and routing number. They're going to ask for your tax uh, information. Um, and then you need to set up what your preferences and policies are so that people will be able to see do you offer return policies? Do you uh, have any kind of, um, you, know, you say, yes, it's free shipping, but it's going to come in seven, seven months. You know, what, what's going to be the policies that you're going to put in place? Um, somebody asked whether or not uh, an Instagram shop might be appropriate for a giveaway because uh, they're working with a nonprofit. Um, the answer is uh, no, I don't think it is. Uh, the number one Instagram, i.e. Facebook, will want to make money off of this thing. But that doesn't mean giveaways aren't possible. Instagram has an entire framework for, for managing and doing giveaways. If you want to learn more about it, just simply Google up Instagram giveaway and you'll, you'll find more. It's, it's, a, it's complicated. You need to understand how it works. But there's very established structures for doing it. Yeah, there was just, just a question offered up about how practical is it to use multiple shop options, Facebook, TikTok, Shopify. Um, <clears throat> the answer is it depends upon where your audience is. Um, Facebook and TikTok are vastly different audiences. Uh, people coming to Shopify is vastly different than people who are on Facebook. So if you have products that, were, that is um, appropriate for each one of these different audiences, then absolutely use the multiple pl platforms. Um, I just, I wouldn't plan on doing TikTok for like, you know, getting out of your chair uh, assistant <laughs> devices or <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. All right. So, um, again, one of the things that we like is we like to have a personal brand. Um, you want to build, be building up that trust factor. The more that people feel like they really recognize and know who you are, the better. So Facebook, and Instagram, they allow you to do personalization uh, to some extent. Um, when you click on shop, select a shop, select edit, you got two different tabs that are there, layouts and styles. Uh, one is to display collections and how they're going to look. Style is to adjust what the overall color scheme is going to be. Um, I'll just mention uh, uh, before we get into this next piece, um, I think that the that notion we talked about at the very beginning about authenticity, it translates both ways. John was just saying, you know, essentially the old real estate saying location, location, location. <laughs> So yes, you choose the shop platform that most mirror, uh, that's going to be most exposure to the target audience that you're looking for. But at the same time, we feel strongly, I believe, that you also have to pick a platform that matches your particular style. You know, we have people coming to talk to us about marketing, and you can just tell they're folks who tweet. They are Twitter nuts. They are the kind of people who are capable and actually enjoy it, which is a really key thing. So you do have to try out the different platforms, see what really matches. Some people are just Pinterest lovers because they're archivers and curators of pure imagery. Some people are Instagram lovers because it's really about their phones and a lot of times capturing a moment or capturing a, a spontaneity or candid. Some people just gravitate naturally towards the community and Facebook it's whatever really feels right to you. And I, I do think that it has to. Uh, it's very, very hard to sustain one of these efforts on a platform that doesn't match your particular style. 
as well. Do you, do you agree with that? I don't know. If, that's just my opinion. But. Yeah. Um, part of it is the, the newness factor. I mean, the, the, the younger the crowd will adapt, will adopt things much faster. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for the 40, 50, 60 year old crowd, it's going to be going for the more stable platforms that have been around for a while, Facebook, uh, so forth. Um, for whatever reason, Instagram and Pinterest, they're very, they're highly visual. That, that seems to attract more of a, a female than a male audience. Um, so, you know, when you're looking to decide which platform and, and who the audiences are, um, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at different demographics, but understand that, that there's going to be quite a, quite a bit of overlap that happens. Um, TikTok was originally for a very young crowd and it's become now um, very popular with the 40 and 50 year old uh, crowds as well. And not just uh, females, but, but men. So it, uh, it continually changes. Snapchat, I don't know if that one's been picked up by, by the, the, the 50, 60 year old crowd yet, but uh, um, it's, it's uh, definitely uh, the go-to place for the 18 to 25, 18 to 30 year old crowd. Right. So basically, it's it's pretty easy to just add products. We're not going to get into too much detail about this. It's laborious, by the way. A plan on that. We've had folks coming to us with three and four hundred um, SKUs that they want to enter onto a shop, and um, we usually advise them to try to get a little bit of help because it's it's daunting. By the time you're doing product description, photography, shipping, weight, you know. Um, it, I could go on, SKU numbers, pricing, conditional pricing, shipping, sales tax. It and, turns to be a ton of work to do it. And at least as far as we've seen so far, uh, Facebook and Instagram do not, they don't have an import function. So you can't create like, you know, with other e-commerce, you create a spreadsheet and now you can just import the, you know, a thousand products. Uh, we haven't seen that uh, really yet with it, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram. I guess that's coming. I would think that's it is. Yeah, it's one of the things they've been talking about. Um, Which from uh, other uh, sales platforms. So, so I think we, we just showed this quickly, just to um, show you the next step in adding a product, and then very, very important is tagging uh, your product um, with uh, meta descriptions and, and meta text, and that's going to make a giant change in how easy it is to find you. Products. And it, it does two things. One is from a search standpoint that helps out, but the second is from a conversion standpoint because when somebody hovers, they're going to see that tags that you put on there, and that's going to convince them on whether they should really um, click over to, to look at it in more detail or not. So we're just wrapping up quickly, just uh, walking through, uh, not walking through, but just showing a quick outline of how to set up an Instagram um, uh, shop. You do need to um, have a business um, account to do all this stuff, as we mentioned earlier, um, and uh, connected to a Facebook page, incidentally. And um, it's a, it's um, not as easy as the Facebook shop, but uh, tremendously powerful once you get it set up. Yeah. And again, send us a, an email, and um, we'll send you a copy of this deck. I even have a a um, extracted text file of all of the words that are in this deck without the pictures for quick scanning as well. I will send you. Anything here you want to talk about, John? Um, so the, the biggest thing with Instagram is that you're not going to be managing your product or your store, your store information really in Instagram. It's uh, connecting to whatever the collection was on Facebook. Um, so Facebook is, that's going to be the, the main place that you're going to use. And what that, uh, what happens there is that a lot of people on Instagram, they're, you, they do everything on their phone, managing things on Facebook on your phone is very difficult. So you'll end up going to your phone to be able to, um, to, to see what it looks like, but you'll be on your desktop or laptop computer in order to manage your products. Uh, so we got a couple of different questions coming in. Um, yeah, I'm just going to answer that one. Um, okay. So and then we're just going to take a little peek into what we kind of see coming down the the, the pike. Um, somebody asked a specific question about Facebook business names. Um, send me an email about that. That's that's really um, a specific question. And I'll be happy to talk to you about it afterwards. Yeah. And um, then and then there's a question about the meta tag. A uh, meta tag is basically just a description. Um, it's, it's any piece of text that's attached to something. Um, so in this case, we're talking, you know, the name description, those are, those are the meta tags. 
Okay. So what's coming down the deck is personalization. Um, we want to make it even easier for people to buy and for it to be related directly to a person. Um, so it will um, mimic the, the in-store experience as much as possible. The storekeeper will, um, as we call them, will act like a salesperson. So you'll start seeing uh, automatic ref uh, recommendations happening. Um, there'll be a robot that pops up and saying, how can I help you? Do you have any questions? Um, you know, we as, as store owners will put into the robot, here are the top 200 questions that people ask and the answers so that it can automatically answer the questions. Um, so there's a bunch of uh, personalization that will be happening with this. And then in terms of the products that you'll be seeing um, that Facebook and Instagram and others will be showing to you uh, that will come all through, you know, your history of where you've uh, gone to your cookies. There's been a big debate over getting rid of the third party cookies and how are they going to replace that and how are we going to have personalization happening? It's not going to go away. Um, they're coming up with better, easier ways to do it. Excellent. And then, and then we're um, basically wrapping up, but the one overwhelming um, trend, I guess you could say, is that the shopping is really becoming um, incredibly visual, especially with the advent of um, expanded bandwidth on mobile and on uh, landlines. I mean, yeah. so we're seeing a huge boon in high resolution imagery and 360 views, virtual stuff, Zoom stuff. And what that means is you're gonna to need to rely more and more on really competent photography and videography in yeah. order to um, display your stuff. And in, in every single um, hardware device manufacturer out there, um, Apple and Microsoft and um, even um, Sony and PlayStation, they're all getting involved in coming up with these 3D uh, goggles, the AR uh, virtual reality or augmented reality uh, goggles and immersive so that they can connect to these visual experiences. Um, they see that online shopping is going to be a huge uh, revenue generator for them. And um, we'll be seeing more and more of these um, social media platforms that offer shopping that will then be integrated into your Sony PlayStation or integrated into your Xbox um, or integrated into your, your Oculus uh, goggles. And once you put them on, you'll feel like you're walking through a store and being able to uh, do all your virtual shopping right there from your living room. From the AR side, what Apple is talking about and what Microsoft is talking about coming out are the goggles that as you're inter interacting with the regular world, they will see something, identify it, and be able to give you a shopping tag right there if you're interested. Um, so I don't see that Jeff's wearing this, you know, nice little uh, uh, vest and I'll say, oh, that's very interesting. Boom, boom, pop up, I'll say, oh, he got it from me. Here we go. I can buy one just like that. Thank you, that one. And the pink glasses. Yeah. So that's our show for today, you guys. Uh, if you want a copy of the deck, please send an email to me at jeff at .com. If you want to contact either John or me directly, you can just email us at one of these addresses. Um, and uh, don't forget to contact SCORE and uh, get yourself a business mentor. And that's... Uh, uh, Yep. Thanks, Jeff and John. That was that was terrific. Um, and two things on uh, getting a copy of the presentation from Jeff. I would suggest you uh, request it by the title. Today's title, of course, was Social Commerce. Uh, they were here last week when they did a uh, another webinar on digital marketing. So if you want to request that one as well, uh, please uh, reach out to them about that. And the second point on getting the copies, uh, a, a recording of this webinar will be available within a couple of days on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. And it's an excellent way to review their uh, hard copies uh, because a lot of their pearls of wisdom obviously come verbally and answering questions, et cetera, will be in the, uh, in the recording itself. Again, SCORE offers free individual counseling. So please use the link on the screen or actually visit our website and click request a mentor. We're available for sessions via phone, email and video these days. Also, please fill out your evaluations that have been sent at the end of the webinar. On behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's live webinar. In closing today, a big thank you to Westport Library and our speakers, Jeff and uh, Jeff Siever and John Dupree. Thanks guys, that's it.